to our podcast. My name is Kirk Banks. My name is Chen Chen. And today we're going to be talking about a book, Where Wizards Stay Up Late, The Origins of the Internet. Um, we're going to start off by the misconception about uh, that we had even before we started reading the book. And that, what was that misconception? Also, before we read the book, we had the misconception about the, the, ori- the original intent of the Alphanet, well, which is... Uh, the Alphanet, which is the... Uh, First version, first version of the internet. Yeah. We have the misconception about that the internet was created to be resistant to, uh, to uh, a nuclear war, right? Yeah. yeah. But but um, um but it actually wasn't. Yeah. It's actually the company before our before ARPANET that uh, created this rumor, and that was on um, the research and development study done for the Air Force. Yes. And um. Because of the in response to the Russians, uh, the Sputnik and all that stuff, they thought that that uh, the Air Force thought that they needed to have this advanced system to be able to handle all the nuclear possible nuclear attacks. But that actually had nothing to do with why ARPANET and the Internet was really created. It was for the information, the past, yeah. the exchange of information yeah. between universities. Yeah, actually, it's the original intent was to link computers at scientific communities to share resources among researchers and scientists. So, the first main part of the book is about a guy named J.C. Linklater. Uh, yeah, J.C. Linklater, he's a junior, he is a psychologist, which is very fun that he's With, not a computer scientist. Right, which would be really confusing for our, our people that have not read the book, it's, but that is the, this is the first guy, it's actually not a computer scientist, he was a yeah. psychologist. And but he has a passion and a vision for computer science. He actually wrote a very famous article named The Symbiosis Between Humans and Machines. And in that article, he mentioned, he pointed out that the machine fun- functions as a problem-solving partner. And he ha- had a, ver- a vision about how computer and uh, humans can work together. Yeah, and I mean, and basically a synergy between the two of them. This, this man is extremely smart. Yeah. There's a quote in the books that says, he could see the resolution of a technical problem before the rest of us could even calculate it. Yeah. So we'd still be reading the problem, and he'd have the answer for us. So this guy was an outside-of-the-box thinker and just enjoyed really tough problems. And the f- and starting the Internet is definitely a pretty daunting task, and yeah. networking and stuff that's never even been thought of before he had to create. And that, this seems like the perfect guy. Um, the next major part of the book is about packet switching, packet and switch. specifically two specific guys. But yeah. let's talk... First, I'm going to explain what packet switching is. Packet switching was basically breaking the large chunks of data that needed to be yeah. sent across the internet into little packets, little blocks, that, so that they could all be transferred over easily. Yeah. Um, and there are two, and that was really the key to starting to develop how we could transfer all this mass amount of information across the internet. Yeah. And that was um, created by two guys. Two guys. Your guy that you're going to talk about his name. Also, uh, Paul Barron and okay. Donald. Uh, okay, you're going to talk about Donald Davies, and I'm going to talk about Paul Barron. Okay. So Paul Barron worked for again the, what we talked about in the beginning, the Rand Corporation for the Air Force before ARPANET, before the company BBN that owned ARPANET yes. uh, was even created. And he came up with this idea. It was actually more than just packet switching. He wanted a decentralized network with multiple parts. He wanted to divide the message into blocks, which was the packet switching part. Yes. And they wanted to store and forward um, all that information. So basically, you put every all the different nodes that information would go to, and it would stay there and be stored there, and then move on to the next one so that you couldn't really lose information. And it could go backwards if information got corrupted. Yeah. So that was these were revolutionary ideas. These are ideas that no one thought were... He would tell people, and they would think he was joking. It was People wouldn't take him seriously. But um, that was really the he was really starting to develop the key ideas, especially packet switching. And then there's this guy named uh, David, uh, Donald Davis. Oh, it's interesting that the Paul Barry and the Donald Davis uh, the, the quite the same idea about packet switching. And actually, the Donald Davis is very uh, deliberate about uh, selecting the name of, of packet switching. Actually, he he has he. Joke had made a joke with his Baron that he said, "Well, you may got there first, but I got the name." Right. So I mean, he basically, he's really, he really focused all of his energy on packet switching. I already yeah. said how Paul there and had these three different ideas. Yeah. Davies really didn't see all those ideas. He just saw the importance of packet switching and the central part that I was going to play in this network. So moving along, we're going to talk about the company that was behind the internet that created the original internet, and that's yeah. BBN. BBN. 
And what, how do you describe them? Yeah, there's a uh, BBN is held a re reputation of the third university in Boston, in next Boston, to uh, uh, Harvard and MIT. The idea of creating this network was pitched, and a uh, hundred to a hundred and forty potential companies. Yeah. Um, and only twelve of them sent sent responses back. So that's how serious they thought this was going to be and how much yeah. of a chance they thought this had to be. They had the Honeywell DDP 516, which you're seeing on the screen now, yes. um, and that was built to military specification. It started with four main schools, uh, UCLA and Stanford. Stanford, UCSB, and Utah. Utah, and those were the first four. It created two imps using the Honeywell DDPs. Yeah, DDP, yeah. Imps were basically uh, routers or forwarding devices between the two. Yeah. They communicated the computer at the, at the college with the network. It took seven years, but there were starting to become hundreds of these nodes. And it just every, it became a point where an, almost every month between then there was a new node popping up, a new node popping up, and then yeah. it just continued to multiply. One quote in the book that sums up everything in our opinions. We, you've seen us go from this misconception we had from the beginning of the book before we even opened the book, really, and how that was disproved, to a few key guys who created the ideas around the internet, to a company that established the internet and the first few nodes and the technology behind it, to how this internet just exploding. So um, what's a quote that, you've, that we both felt uh, really summed that up? It was said by Byron, that is, the process of technological development is like building a procedural. What happens when you like three of the hottest rappers out of Kansas in the studio?